The finale of this week's Torah portion, Numbers chapter 7, at least on the surface, is as tedious as it is long at 88 verses. It begins on the day that Moses finished sitting, setting up the tabernacle. He anointed and consecrated it in all its furnishings, as well as the altar and its utensils. Then the chieftains of Israel, the heads of the ancestral houses, drew near and brought their offerings before the Eternal. The boring part follows. As we read the names of all those tribal leaders and the gifts they brought, 11 days for 11 tribes. But wait, aren't there 12 tribes? Yes, only 11 bring gifts because God commands the Levites, the priests and their cousins who served in, as their attendants, bring none. Writing in the Social Justice Torah Commentary, Imani Chapman and Rabbi Ellen Lippman teach us that Aaron, the high priest, has been in despair at seeing his tribe of Levi not included in these rituals. As a result, next week's portion begins with God commanding Aaron, Moses to have Aaron lift the lights of the menorah. The Levites do not bring covered wagons or the animals to draw them, their gift is light. For many years now, and particularly these last two years as president, Amanda Orville has shed light on our congregation as a leader with wisdom, decisiveness, prompt and clear communication, kindness, and enthusiasm. Every day of Amanda's presidency over overlapped an ongoing global pandemic. We have constantly had to pivot. The need to change course is nothing new for our people. Throughout our history, circumstances have confronted Jewish communities or the wider society in which they lived, forcing adaptations, often creative ones. The process begins in the Bible, in the wilderness, because of the defilement that prohibits them to engage in sacred rituals. Some of the Israelites are unable to observe Passover on the proper date. In effect, they are both required and forbidden to offer a paschal sacrifice that day. Moses seeks God's guidance, and God enables those Israelites under specific limited circumstances to observe Passover a month late. As Chapman and, he, and Lippman explain, God grants us not only specific opportunities to make up for the missed Passover, but also the broader possibility of second chances. Amanda is not God. I'm not Moses. Eileen's not Miriam. Still, for two years, with expert guidance from our COVID task force and through creative problem solving with our executive committee and board, Amanda has empowered Eileen, other members of our staff, our fantastic volunteers, and me to think expansively, to prepare programs and services in ways we never had previously, to engage our congregation in new ways and not to burn ourselves out in the process. And if we got it wrong the first time, a second chance was always available. In short, Amanda has been an extraordinary ally to Eileen and to me, to all of our staff, volunteers, and lay leadership. Our governing documents in, designate the president as the congregation's chief executive officer. Amanda has been unafraid to take up that mantle when unafraid to take up that mantle when the situation called for it. More often, she has encouraged others, beginning with Eileen and me, to be our best selves and to do what's best for the congregation we all love. Chapman and Lippmann describe several attributes required of an ally. Awareness. You recall that the tabernacle does not benefit from all the Israelites until the Levites are privileged to lift up its lights. Chapman and Lippmann teach that the preeminent medieval commentator Rashi suggests that the lifting up of the lights is actually the lifting of the priest doing the lighting and that the priest stood on some kind of stool or small ladder to lift the lights to their proper place. 
we are obliged to pay attention to what's needed and to provide it to those in need. One of the greatest moments of Amanda's presidency came last summer when she realized, that is, she became aware that our staff had taken too little time off during the pandemic. Often a chief executive's job is to make people work harder. On that occasion though, Amanda recognized that people needed a break. She closed the office for a week. She even wrote about it. And that article was published by our Union for Reform Judaism. Interestingly, the union itself had done something similar for its staff, but its leaders kept that quiet, not wanting people to think they were slacking. By contrast, Amanda wanted everybody to know, that is to be aware, that vacations are critical to productivity. She encouraged other congregations to follow our examples. Colleagues thanked me when their leaders heeded Amanda's suggestion. The thanks I told them was all due to Amanda. Listening. I once knew a real estate agent whose motto was, I can sell any house except my own. Amanda Orville can keep anybody's secret, and she does, except her own. Amanda is humble enough not only to know, but to broadcast her weaknesses. As she began her presidency, she knew that she was too quick to react, specifically to speak before others were done. The ability to mute herself on Zoom became her friend. She used it even more on herself than she did on others when she was running worship live stream. She learned to listen before speaking. Learning. Chapman and Littman write, while we can never be fully competent in the culture of another, we can continue to learn and be, be curious, recognizing that others may be the experts. Amanda learned a great deal as our president about Judaism, about specific technologies we employ, and above all, about the diverse needs of our congregation. Amanda consistently asked us to take all of our congregants into account. No, we couldn't make everybody happy with each decision we made, particularly about COVID safety. At the same time, knowing where everybody is coming from has been central to our making the best decisions collectively. Persisting. Chapman and Lippmann remind us that chet which is often translated as sin, is a term borrowed from archery, meaning to miss the mark. We do not give up when we miss the mark, rather we try again. Persistence is a quality that Amanda brought to her role as president. She works hard, learns what she needs to know, and carries out her mission. I suspect that has something to do with why she recently earned terrific promotion at the library. Her determination to achieve what's best for Congregation B'nai Israel has benefited our synagogue home and all its members. Now, having earned the presidency of our congregation through her long years of service and gained the trust of our membership, Amanda has even more richly earned the most distinguished title a synagogue can offer, past president not to mention mother of one of our fantastic temple musicians. Every rabbi, every temple staff, and every member of a synagogue anywhere would be blessed to have an ally like Amanda Orville. We are blessed that she is ours. Amen.